Hello Futurasis and Pre-Med Explorers. This is Milena Garcia, your host for Ross University Checking the Post, a pre-med podcast. This is our mini podcast featuring facts and information about our medical program, insights from current students, and tips from practicing physicians. Each week, this podcast will be broken down in small episodes, focusing on one aspect of our program, also having guests talk about their own experiences as students and as doctors. In celebration of the Ross University commencement, Dr. Ryan Ezerkel was nominated by his peers to represent the graduating class as this year's student speaker. Dr. Ezerkel quickly became a champion and advocate for the student body while in medical school. Along with becoming the SGA president in 2019, he served multiple leadership roles, including clinical SGA Honor Council Senator and SGA class representative. He continued volunteering his time outside the classroom as a member of the Welcome Committee and the International Medical Foundation's orientation for newly enrolled students, as well as serving as a student ambassador. In this episode, he joins me for a conversation about his journey. Welcome back, future Aussies. Thanks for joining us again. Today, we have Dr. Ryan Ezerkale joining us, who's going to talk about his experience. Thank you so much. Let's have a moment to have you introduce yourself. My name is Ryan Ezerkale, uh, originally born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, I attended the University of Central Florida from 2008 to 2014 and uh, graduated UCF with a Bachelor of Science in Health Sciences Preclinical. Um, you know, right around the time I graduated, um, I actually applied to U.S. medical schools. Unfortunately, I did not gain uh, acceptance to any of those schools and ended up taking four years off before I started at Ross in uh, May of 2018. And their loss is definitely our gain for sure. Um, interesting point that you just brought up about these gap years. More and more, I hear the prospective students taking gap years. Uh, it sounds like yours was a little bit more than just one or two years. You were out for four years. What were you doing during those four years? Yeah. So, you know, as I look back at my journey and, you know, recap my journey, I'd, I'd like to label it as unconventional, unorthodox, um, you know, but allow me to gain a lot of perspective and a lot of growth. And, you know, during that time, you know, when I did what did, was not accepted to U.S. medical school, I used it as an opportunity to go through, you know, soul searching phase and go through some growth. And, um, and I actually worked for three years as a healthcare recruiter at a local firm in Fort Lauderdale, where we were responsible for staffing uh, hospitals. This experience was important for me uh, because it allowed me to uh, grow professionally, you know, work my opponent and on my professional skills, my organizational skills, but also allow me to grow emotionally, you know, and um, allow me to grow uh, or, from a from a time organizational standpoint, and you know, um, also allow me to develop my, you know, a lot of skills that help me later on down the road. And also during that time, I coached high school basketball as well. You know, but more than anything, and as I mentioned before, offered perspective, you know, in speaking with uh, these healthcare providers on a daily basis, I always knew in the back of my mind, I wanted to go back to school. I wanted to go to medical school. And I thought that, you know, opportunity had been lost on me. And speaking with these providers uh, really relit the flame under me to go back to school. How did you find Ross? Yes. Yeah, so uh, glad you asked that. Uh, so right around the time I was, you know, going through this soul searching phase and trying to figure everything out, you know, again, it was around uh, 2017. And around that time, a dear friend of mine, uh, actually someone I went to college with, uh, Dr. Richard Enriquez, uh, had just graduated from Ross University and just uh, matched uh, his residency at UCF. And he, he reached out and said, like, hey, Ryan, I know you were pre-med at UCF. Um, you know, I know that you've been taking some time off, you know, trying to figure things out and actually just graduate from Ross. And, you know, I think this is a school that would be great for you. You know, I think it's something you would you enjoy and also be, uh, you know, find success at. And he, you know, told me all about, you know, how family oriented the culture is there and how they provide you all the resources and tools necessary to do well and succeed. And, uh, you know, how they give you that opportunity. And, you know, when I spoke to him and, and when you get, provide that glowing endorsement, um, that's when I went ahead and shot my shot and uh, applied to Ross and reached out to admissions and got more information. And truly, it was, um, you know, um, um, per, uh, very opportune timing for me and very life altering, as, as you guys can see. Yeah. So. And, and medical school is, is a big change. 
right? No matter where you're going. And in this case, even bigger, because you are going to the Caribbean. I knew I wanted to go to medical school. That was my goal, my dream, you know. Um, but one of my biggest anxieties upon enrolling was I ultimately I felt like I forgot how to be a student, you know, and it's it'd been thir- three, four years since I picked up a book and did any studying. So Really, to me, the biggest learning curve was trying to figure out how to be a student, how to, how to study, how to put that time in again, you know, how to kind of shift gears and put myself in a position of success where I could do well consistently uh, on each and every exam. And, you know, that was the biggest learning curve for me. Uh, but, you know, I'll say upon, join, upon enrolling at Ross and, and being there at the campus and having those resources, I, you know, gave me an opportunity to kind of uh, tap into those things. Mm-hmm. And realize, you know, where were things that I needed to improve on, things that um, I could do, you know, do better, and where my weaknesses were, where my strengths were. Uh, and, and these are departments such as tutoring. Um, you know, also I relied on my fellow colleagues. So there's abundance of things there that really allowed me to bolster my 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 studying habits. Uh, you know, I'll say the biggest takeaway from my transition process, because I know there, are, you know, a lot of folks at home who, you know, may have that one to two year gap and, you know, really feel rusty when it comes to being a student. And my biggest advice to them is don't be afraid to ask for help, you know, when you are in the thick of the curriculum, you know, uh, there's a lot of us that were in the same boat and we're all here to help. And, you know, even staff and faculty also able to help. So number one, don't be afraid to ask for help. And the story that that comes to mind is, you know, uh, obviously with the first two weeks, because you're off to the races once you start, uh, you know, was a little bit of a rough patch. In fact, the first exam that I took ever at medical school, I ended up getting, I think, in the low 60s, if not mid 60s, which is barely passing, you know, and um, it, it kind of, it, it obviously was very rattling, right? Kind of rattled the cage. Yeah. Me. But the the first thing I did was, okay, where, where can I do better? And, you know, luckily the, the resources, even the exam layout, you know, really highlights kind of where your weaknesses are. And, you know, even relying on tutoring, they were able to highlight, you know, what are, what my weaknesses were, what my strengths were. And, you know, immediately there forward, I went ahead and doubled down on what my strengths were, you know, allow myself to focus, hone in, cut out distractions and do the things that I felt were best for me. Um, You know, for me, I understood that, hey, I needed to study alone. I didn't do well in group settings. Also understood that um, I'm, you know, I learn more and absorb more when I read, not when I listen. Uh, too scatterbrained to listen to anything. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, after that, after you know, understanding those things, embracing those things, then you know, doubling down my strengths. The next exam, I ended up getting an 87, uh, which was, I believe, the seventh or sixth highest score in the class. So you know, my my message to everyone at home again is, don't be afraid to ask for help, and it's it's also very doable. You know. Um, once you uh, you become a you, you pretty much become a um, byproduct of your environment. You, you know you if you surround yourself with people who do well and want to see you succeed, you will become that. You know you will become that as well. As I mentioned, more and more prospective students are taking one or two gap years in the middle, and I I think it's worth talking about how don't forget how to be a student, and if that happens and you land in this medical school campus and now having to deal with the medical school curriculum, it's not easy, right? And yeah, there may be some struggles. Uh, Find the help, find um, resources that will help you succeed. And obviously you did. You have a list of accomplishments uh, here. I I was trying to write down, even lost track of everything that you've done on campus. So I want to highlight some of uh, your accomplishments here. Uh, Ryan, what was your number one accomplishment? My number one accomplishment, you know, especially when I look back on these four slash, you know, five years, is uh, my time as SGA president, you know, um, it was the crowning accomplishment for me because, you know, it's, 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 you know, when you're, when you have that role, you're, you're representing around 1500 students on the campus. You know, a lot of that comes with a lot of responsibility. You also have an executive board around, I think, 12, 13, 14 people, you know, and you're working with staff, uh, also senior administration on a weekly basis on how to optimize the student experience. So, you know, that was something I didn't take lightly. You know, I wanted obviously the best for my colleagues, you know, I wanted to ensure a successful semester. You know, to me, that gave me a joy to be able to have a pave and leave that legacy 
with the school and be able to make connections not only with the students but also with the senior administration and uh, you know help to help make change uh, you know for for the future for the betterment of the future for for students so uh, mm -hmm. that to me was you know the crowning accomplishment and um, because of that, after serving the term, finished basic sciences after that, uh, that actually led me to serving as uh, clinical science, as, uh, CSGA, so Clinical Student Government Association Honor Council Senator, um, you know, uh, for, for clinical sciences. This is, it has to come with a lot of responsibility, a lot of leadership, right? All good uh, um, characteristics to add to your CV as well and your repertoire and your your skills. All right, congratulations. And continuing on with the list of accomplishments, I also I know you also got involved with research, right? Tell me more about the research. Yeah, so I would say that was probably one of my biggest proud parent moments, you know, um in you know when in, in, in publish, publishing the research, mm -hmm. you know, being able to give back to the healthcare uh, community, uh, being able to advance the healthcare field, uh, really leave my fingerprints on healthcare. I'll say it was one of the most proud feelings I've, I've had. It's hard as a medical student to kind of get your foot in the door with the research, right? You know, I, I found it, you know, mildly difficult, uh, but the biggest thing for me was networking. You know, I, I think that's really the takeaway message for you know, if you're having trouble finding research or you want to pursue research in the future, uh, my biggest thing is to network, 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 network. Um, you know, for me, it came during my time at Cleveland Clinic, uh, during surgery rotations, you know, uh, um, I networked with the residents, networked with uh, the senior residents, attendings, even the fellows, and uh, wasn't afraid to ask, hey, do you guys have any research projects you're currently working on? Uh, anything you may need help with? And eventually uh, I was able to connect with, um, you know, one of the senior residents. He said, yeah, Ryan, you know, we have this project in the works. If you don't mind, we'd love for you to help contribute on the discussion, the conclusion. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Count me in, um, you know, and it, 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 it may seem like a tall order, especially if you don't have any prior research experience under your belt. But I can assure you uh, it is doable. There's, you know, plenty of resources that you guys can tap into learn. Um, you know, uh, whether it's YouTube, uh, Google, and even some of these research publication websites to provide you resources to help uh, with crafting your, your publication. But yes, network guys, um, and don't be afraid to ask, and uh, it'll, it'll all pay off. Another good point that you brought up, the importance of networking. This is how you're able to secure that research position, but networking is just overall important in, in many other perspectives, right? Can you talk a little bit more about wh where else, what else is important to, to network? Yeah, so networking is an under, understatement to say that networking is important. You know, um, more than anything, obviously going through rotations, uh, uh, it, it's important to, you know, play your role as a student, learn, right? And, uh, you know, learn and, and study and do well. But more, I think also just as important it's, it, is to, to network during that time. You know, to connect with the residents, to connect with these fellows and attendings, uh, not only for purposes of maybe get, gathering a letter of rec, but, you know, for, for your future as a doctor, you know, to have these connections, you know, have these, um, uh, you know, have these people that you can, uh, you know, reach out to, to gather more information, you know, people you can speak to uh, regarding, you know, your own match process or, you know, um, your, you know, garner more perspective uh, for, for your own future, your own goals. Uh, so I can't state that enough. You know, it's always important to network and, and you know, uh, connect with these people because, you know, a lot of these, a lot of the people that I connect with are more than happy to help me. And I can say, mm -hmm. you know, without a doubt that the people you guys connect with in the future uh, or even currently will be more than happy to help you as well. And it really goes a long way. Now, Ryan, I know for a fact you have one more recent accomplishment Ross University commencement speaker 2023. Congratulations. Tell me more about this one. Yes. Um, so breaking news, guys. Um, actually, by the time you will be seeing this, I will be I will have already uh, given the speech, uh, delivered the speech. So knock on wood, hopefully it goes well. Hopefully I don't crash and burn <laughs> there on the stage, uh, although I'm you know confident that, that, that it will go well. But uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, by the time you guys see this, it'll already be, have been delivered. And you know, so I was just uh, received the news, I think, about a week and a half ago. And um, this honestly is the biggest, the highest honor and privilege I think that's been ever given to me, you know, and 
Um, super excited, all the emotions, you know, anxious, you know, ultimately I want to do well and speak well on behalf of the students and, you know, on behalf of the school and, and especially on behalf of the families as well. And uh, so, you know, definitely looking forward to the moment. Also speaking back to, you know, the leadership that ultimately what led me to this moment was the fact that I wanted to pay, always wanted to pay it forward to the student body, you know, um, especially upon entering Ross, the students have always been there for me. They've always rallied around me, you know, and it's always been such a tight knit group, such a family or two group and people have always gone out of the way to help me. And, um, you know, the reason why I pursued leadership in the first place was to pay it forward to them, pay it forward to the students and help the students, you know, be their voice. So, you know, really the culmination of my work as a student leader has also led to this opportunity. And, you know, I see it poetically as a full circle moment, another opportunity for me to not only represent the students and their voice, but to pay it forward to them and speak well on their behalf. So beyond excited for that. And, and the emotion, emotional journey continues because yes. the residency starts a, a month later, right? Yes. In your residency, you matched in internal medicine. Congratulations yes. also Thank on you. that. Uh, what's the plan for internal medicine? Well, ultimately my, my long-term goal over those three years is to, you know, give back to the residency mission and really expand the residency mission and what that means is being a good you know teammate you know a good part of the uh the medical team um you know being able to publish more research articles uh being able to give back to the community um you know being able to you know better the team and elevate the team uh you know and uh really ultimately better uh be the best doctor i possibly can be for my patients and um also keep my eyes open for a potential specialty that, that may catch my eye and uh, if I wanna explore for fellowship. So the match process doesn't happen overnight. Tell us a little bit more about how, what to expect and how does it work? You go through a long journey, guys, right? You know, you go through this journey of uh, exams and then board exams, rotations, letters, personal statements, you know, um, obviously, you know, all the little things along the way. And, you know, um, starting in September, you, you apply and then you go through interviews uh, from October through January and then February, you submit your rank order list. And then March 13th, it, 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 you know, it's the culmination of everything, right? Uh, culmination of all your hard work and it all boils down to the one, one moment. And, you know, that's obviously the email indicating that you have matched. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, it's, it's all the emotions humanly possible bundled up in the one moment. Um, at least, you know, from that was my experience for me. You know, that's that includes joy, uh, anxiety, stress, uh, anticipation, happiness, uh, disbelief. And you know, I'll I'll tell you that when that when that email does come for you, it makes all the hard work and sacrifice completely worth it. You know, when you see uh, that email come in that you have matched. And, um, and, and this is just a reminder to you guys that continue to work hard, you know, don't be down on yourself, stay positive, work hard, um, you know, because your, your dreams will come true. You know, you uh, have a school here that will support you in every way they can. Um, you know, also student body that will rally around you and uplift you and be there for you. And, you know, don't be afraid to ask for help. And, um, you know, again, fortunately for me, it all worked out, got my number one choice. And I have no doubt that it'll work for you guys at home Ryan, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Any final advice that you want to share? You have accomplished so much before, during, and now on to after medical school. You've been uh, uh, successful in everything that you did with the struggle. And here's the story of how to come back from struggling, right? Uh, so it's been a pleasure highlighting your journey here. Uh, any final advice? to our future Rossies listening. My take home message for you guys is, you know, medical schools, you get out what you put into it. It's, it's doable, you know? Uh, for some of you may think that, hey, I've taken some time off. This might, you know, be a, too much of a tall order for me to undertake, or this might be too daunting. Um, my advice is no, you know, it's, it's, it's very doable. It's very manageable, you know? You treat it like a full-time job and, you know, it becomes very manageable and, you know, and, and you guys can and will find plenty of success, you know, as long as you keep some of those things in mind and put in the work, uh, put in the time and, um, you know, you know, uh, tap into those resources given to you and you guys will do well, I have no doubt.
Thank you so much for your time and all your advice. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Melina. I really appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to share this story. And, you know, uh, I'm always happy to help and give back and, you know, be here for the Ross community and uh, eternally proud of us and uh, really excited to be here. So thank you. And thank you to those of you at home and uh, wishing you guys the best of luck and uh, looking forward to hopefully seeing all your faces soon. And we are very proud of you. For those of you listening, thank you once again for joining us. We will see you next time. Thank you for listening to Ross University Checking the Pulse, a pre-med podcast. This is Milena Garcia, your host. This podcast is made for you, so let me know what topics you want us to cover on future episodes. You can send me your comments, feedbacks, and requests to mgarcia at rossu.edu. Definitely follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel at Ross Med School or on Facebook. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, I am working my way to five stars. So remember to send me your comments and let me know your ideas. If you're on Spotify, remember to click on the follow button to get our future episodes. All right. See you future Rossies and pre-med explorers next week.